Morning, everyone. I'm Jenny Sauer. Welcome to the End User Tools Presents Grasshopper Mormon Cricket Data Collection Using ArcGIS Field Maps. And this is for the current year 2022. I'm going to go ahead and give you last seconds for entering your poll, your votes for the poll, how you feel about confidence this year for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket Data Collection. So I'm just going to give you three two, one, and end the poll. I'm going to go ahead and share the results with you so you can see what I see. I see a lot of you need a little bit of a refresher. That makes sense. Um, there's some new things about this year. The biggest one being the app has changed. So I don't see anyone worried about that, which is awesome. And I see a couple newbies and at least one who's just a little unsure about what to expect or what they need. So we all have our reasons for being here. Um, I'll go ahead and stop sharing those results. But welcome, welcome to um, this morning following a holiday weekend. I sure hope that um, I cover everything I meant to cover. My notes are pretty good. And thank you all for being here for this first offering. A couple things that I want to share with you before we really get started on what to expect this year are some resources. So I'm just going to drag over. Well, first, I'm going to stick it in the chat. There's a couple links there. And then I'm going to show you these two links. What we have here is the Mobile Data Collection Tools website, which has all things training support. So I really highly recommend that you bookmark this and visit it often because it's updated frequently. In fact, you may have noticed this training is being recorded and this recording will find its way to this web page. The top part of the web page is document oriented. Um, with links out to a training event calendar. Some of you may have found us this way. These are all of the trainings currently scheduled for 2022, all going to be here, you and me, um, going through this. <clears throat> you can see there's Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. And there are three offerings, which means this will be the same training just given again. So if you feel like you want another refresher a little later in the season, there's one March and there's one in May. And the link to join is right there. So if there's a training that you feel would be helpful, take note of it, make a little note in your calendar and come on in. Another thing here is new to 2022 is the end user tools office hours. This is going to be every Monday from the months of March through the end of June. So our busy season, every Monday, you can wander on in and ask end user tools questions or um, provide a joke or an update or tell us about something that's working or not working. Anything you wanna talk about, it's, it's just like a teacher's office hours. Walk on in, ask the question, leave. Um, so those meetings are there for you as well. Just going back a little bit to this main page, your pest program specific training documents are on this page here, and that's where you'll find the Mormon Cricket Manual and Quick Reference. We do this every year, and it looks very similar. Here it is listed. There's Grasshopper Mormon Cricket, and there's your two documents. So if you need to know how to use this app and you don't have me talking to you, check out the manual. The quick reference is just like a one page kind of get you out in the field cheat sheet like a reminder when you're out there and then back again sorry to give you whiplash down at the bottom is the video gallery this pest program category is where you will find the training that we do together today currently there is ewbbb for this year and it will just keep growing as these trainings progress through the year and are given so please keep this page easily accessible check it often and look for things that you need here we've also got foundations training which takes you through more details on this app so if you're feeling nervous about that that's where you'll find that and then the second link that i gave you is the training quiz and i am totally okay in fact i pretty much encourage you opening this quiz while we go through this training together. The advantage is that as I say the answer, you can go ahead and fill in the answer and get a great score, whatever makes you feel good. And just scrolling down here at this question number three for the email address, if you enter this in with care, completing this quiz will automate an email back to you that says you completed this course. That might be nice to have for your supervisor or um, just to add to your list of accomplishments, or I don't know, maybe print it out and put it on your wall, whatever you need, but it will give you that automated email that says you completed the 
course. So um, please make sure that you take the quiz. It's going to give you that little email and it will test your knowledge a little bit, although I try to be real easy on that. So those two links. I got a question from Brad. Paul and I both need all the help we can get on the quiz. <laughs> Good. Well, um, hopefully we can do this together, Brad. Um, so you and Paul, um, you're welcome to the help. We'll help you through. Um, don't be scared of things like that. I just try to have them there as a nice little metric for you. And they help me too, because it helps. Um, I often will see people are confused by something I said. So it helps me be more clear. So I hope that I'm being clear. Um, so each year, End User Tools Group, really, we consult and refresh this map and the and the data form that you use for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. It doesn't usually change a ton, but there's always kind of something new. And while your national operations manager, in this case, Melinda Sullivan, is responsible for communicating to you all the survey protocol requirements, this little training is your quick stop just to make sure you understand how to use the application as it was designed to collect data for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. So it's that final little tidbit that you need to know as it applies to the app. You'll make your supervisors happy. You'll feel more confident. Maybe it just satisfies your curiosity. Um, but hopefully we reduce some concern and we build confidence in the use of this um, application. So in short, it's just going to make your make you able to do your job well for the year. So we've shared those two um, resources. Let's talk about how you maybe have been prepared to this point. So um, I told you this is kind of like the icing on the cake or the last stop. And really what you should know to this point or can backtrack and catch up on, that's okay, is you should understand how to use the device you're using. For PPQ, our standard device tends to be the iPad mini. Um, but some people might use an iPhone and the look and feel of that should be exactly the same. The only difference with an iPhone is that you're operating well connected and our iPads, we really want to use a disconnected workflow and we'll review that today. So you want to be device savvy, in our case, probably iPad savvy. You want to be app savvy. In this case, it's ArcGIS field maps. And those courses are both in that foundations category on the website. So check them out and make sure that you feel comfortable using both of those, the, the device you're using and the app you're using. And then thirdly, you want to be pretty savvy on program protocol. And I know many of you are returning and, and feel pretty good about that. But that's where you would go back to Melinda Sullivan um, and make sure that you have the resources you need there to understand the program and uh, how that relates to collecting data. So this course is just going to fill in that last gap with updates on how the data is collected in the app. I look at it like a ladder that you're climbing and you've just about gotten to the top and now you can just kind of jump off whee, with a parachute, nothing dangerous there. And so today here is a long list of what we'll talk about. Um, really, it isn't that long and it isn't that hard. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable about using this. I think it's pretty easy. Um, there's a new app to use. So for some of you who used maybe Collector last year, it's going to be just opening a different app, but in truth, it looks exactly the same. So it's just a, you know, a matter of which app do I open. And then there's a new enterprise URL. So if some of you might remember this and we'll, we'll look at it briefly in a couple of slides, but last year in November of 2021, the, um, the enterprise, the portal that's used to host our map services, has transitioned from being managed by the company itself, Esri, into MRP. So it's now a USDA MRP managed URL and the URL changed. So you sign in the same, you just punch in a different URL. We also now this year are hosting training maps in a separate portal. The USDA MRP enterprise portal is our official data collection site and copies of those maps are made just for training purposes, demos, exercises, just playing around, getting used to, to using them in what we call a stage environment, staging environment, which just again is plugging in that URL. So we'll talk about that. Um, we're going to review this disconnected workflow and how that should work, the steps to take to make that successful. We're going to look at the data form and we'll just kind of poke a little bit on some caution areas and things that maybe Either I was confusing um, in how I presented them or maybe just some things to be especially careful with. ArcGIS field maps 
uh, what is this thing anyway? Um, well, we've got an introduction to ArcGIS field maps. We've now had two live trainings on that, and hopefully you've availed yourself of that. Check out the event calendar. There's one more coming in March. If you feel like you need to have a live version, there are 10 videos made, little bite-sized segments that take you through the steps involved in ArcGIS field maps and should make you feel really comfortable. But in truth, um, it really is similar to Collector. And why is that? Well, this is um, the company that makes its little breakdown. Basically, Field Maps is built on, or I'm told is built on the, um, the idea of Collector and is trying to pull features from these other four applications. So these five applications are going away to kind of create this robust one application field maps. And Collector is what it looks like, and then it will take some functionality as it's built. But for now, um, End User Tools is going real easy on using some of these features and making sure that it really just looks the same to you so that um, there's not a lot of user training that needs to happen, especially if you are familiar with Collector. And if you weren't familiar or never used Collector before, no biggie. It's really just like kind of punching in a contact in your phone. So any kind of form that you've ever filled out, it's really no different. And they're built to be very intuitive. In addition, there's a user guide. So that's why I'd keep pointing you back to that website for anything support wise that you might need. The user guide takes you through all the steps to use field maps and those little video segments follow the course of that of that user guide. So they're meant to kind of work together. Next up is this enterprise URL that we talked about. And this looks probably similar again to Collector. When you first open field maps, you'll be presented with this sign in option screen. And we want to always use this sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And when you tap that, you're prompted to put in a URL. And that URL is in every manual. Um, you'll find that on page three, I think, three or four, which takes you through the steps, including screenshots to sign in. And there's videos on signing in with the step-by-step -step live demo kind of thing, view of an iPad. But you want to pick sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise and then type in that URL carefully. And there is that view when it asks for that. Once you've typed in a URL, it does save that URL for future visits. So this would be what it would look like the next time round signing in. I would tap sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise, and then I could just tap the URL. And you might notice it's got MRP right there in, in the URL. So that's how you know you're in, in that official data collection. And again, mentioned previously, this year, training maps are not held in the official data collection site. They're held in a separate environment. And, um, and that environment you can probably see, but I've got a couple of arrows here to kind of sort out the difference. You've got MRP in the official data collection URL, and you've got STG. So think of that as an abbreviation for stage. And we want you to use training maps um, and be able to practice and just kind of play with getting used to using this. A lot of times for demonstrations, it's really helpful so you don't put real data in a real map and have to worry about that being considered real. Um, but the point that I really want to grind home here is that the MRP plain by itself official production URL is for official data only. So we do not want you playing around and putting test points or play points in the official data collection site. And then vice versa, the training site, which has STG in it, should only be used for those play points, no official data collection. This is a test question. So official data collection should not happen in the training site. So what you have to do is make sure that you're not in it. And there's a couple ways to know that you're in the training portal. Um, number one, the background, the base map is pretty dull. There's no imagery in it. I'll show you that because that's what we'll look at today. And the word training, all caps, is right at the beginning of the map title. So if you see training in all caps, that ought to be a really good sign that you need to sign out and sign back in to the official site in order to collect real data. We'll have to be especially careful of that this year and really pay attention to which site we're in when we're collecting official data. 
only in the official data collection site, which is, we call it the production portal, but it's the one that just says MRP, not stage. So we want to be careful of that. The disconnected mode workflow, you all probably are getting familiar with seeing this kind of workflow because it's in every manual and we talk about it every time we come together. The field maps application, much like ArcGIS Collector, was specifically designed to operate well in disconnected mode, meaning not connected to Wi-Fi. That's our disconnect. And the purpose of that is, is to allow for data collection when out in the field. And that's a big win for us because we're often way out there and maintaining Wi-Fi connection is pretty difficult for many of us. So the basic flow is that while connected to Wi-Fi, either in the office or maybe in a hotel, anywhere that we have a reliable Wi-Fi connection, you download an area of interest to the device. So this is a downloaded map area which you plan to collect data in. The device is disconnected from the internet and you go on out and collect data into that downloaded map area. That remains on your device until you return to a reliable Wi-Fi connection. This should be at the end of the day, hopefully twice a day, that you then perform a data sync or synchronize the data from your device back up to that hosted map service, again, in the official in the official production enterprise portal, right? Not the training portal and sync that back. So the, the, the workflow allows you to prepare while in the office and connected, go out and collect data while not connected, come back and synchronize that data back. The data form, what's changed in the data form? Hopefully a little bit of relief, relief could be felt here. Last year, there was tried out a little separate related table for recording if a sample was collected, and that's been removed and simplified back to the old way of doing things, where you just indicate a sample being collected by a optional field that says sample ID. If there is no sample ID to record, you just, you can either leave it blank or write in none or check in with Melinda again. She's the program protocol person to, to check in with, but there's no related table. So let's take a look. Let me give you a camera view of my iPad. I have here a PPQ configured iPad with all of the survey apps all kind of aligned up at the top. Probably some uh, apps that you may not have normally, but I do a lot of testing on this iPad. So try to try to see past that and just see the, the survey apps that we need. And here's field maps. The collector app may remain, but you will not be able to collect data in collector. That is no longer supported at all. And it's probably just there for a little bit longer while some other users or some other programs use it. So you may see it, but that is not the app you want this year. You want field maps and we'll open field maps just by tapping. And I previously signed in, and so it's doing the same thing as uh, Collector does. It's brought me all the way to the last map that I was using. I'm going to go back just a little bit. And I can see right away that I am in that stage portal. I see all these maps that begin with training in all caps. And this group, PPQ End User Tools Training, is only here in the stage portal with all of our training maps included. So these on the device are maps that I have already well connected to Wi-Fi, downloaded an offline area. I'm going to remain connected because I'm in my basement at home and I just want for the purposes of this demo everything to work smoothly. So I'm not going to worry about that, but I do want to show you the Grasshopper Mormon Cricket form. So I've checked that I'm in training and I'm going to do a demo and that's all good. I'm going to open that grasshopper map. This is my downloaded map area. First thing to point out, a couple things along the top. We've got our sync button here with the two arrows, one coming in and one going out. We have our layers menu and all of the layers default to off. And so you turn the layers on that you want to collect data in. I'll turn a couple of them on and you can see right away I've got some data points that were just little test points I added. Again, no real data here. We're in a training map. And if I wanted to check that again, I can see training up here as the title. And hopefully you can see the, the base map's pretty dull. There's no imagery or anything very interesting going on there. But for all testing and play purposes, this is the same, same data form, the same symbology is happening here. And so I'm gonna leave those two layers on and exit out of there. And then this search, search button here and an overflow menu with a few other features here offered 
probably the most interesting might be legend, which if I tap it now is only going to show the legend for those visible. So the two layers that I turned on are here's a legend for those guys. And then something new to field maps is the markup layer. And we might get into that a little bit. Um, there's a whole video on markup and the measure tool, which you're welcome to check out if that's something you're gonna use. So let's look at this data form. In order to add data, you've got an add button. So we just tap this add button. And now because I have two layers visible, I have the choice between those two. If all four were visible, they would all four be listed here. So my first question is to decide which layer I'm going to collect data on. I'll choose um, Nymphal Surveys for Grasshopper. And that opens the data form. Again, if I'm not sure what layer I'm in, here we've got grasshopper nymphal. So I know that's the layer and already brought in is grasshopper and the survey stage nymphal. So we know twice over what layer we're collecting data in. Similar to other um, applications you've used to collect data, we have some default values. Um, this gray asterisk or star after the field name indicates it's a required field. Scrolling up and down with your finger will show you that there are some that don't have that asterisk, so they're not required. There's that field sample ID if you have one. Some of these, um, like for instance, this default is defaulted to USDA APHIS because that's the most common nationally. If you need to change it, tap and make that change. I'll fill this out quickly just so you get an example. Every time you need the keyboard, it opens. I'm going to put in a test number, yes or no for, I'm going to say no because I don't think it is. Um, and then the pest density per square yard, um, you know, of course I don't know survey protocol so I really am just filling in whatever comes easy, might not make any sense. So these guys that are not required, I'm going to leave blank. and. This submit button is blue here, and I'm going to go ahead and tap it, even though some of you might notice I'm missing something. And what you get here is a message that says one of your attribute, what they mean is one of these fields over here failed. And now we've got this red required indicator. So it will tell you if you failed to complete a required field, and then you can go ahead and complete it. I'll tap this to open the calendar. The calendar is restricted only to this year, 2022. So it's probably fastest for me to go backwards, but you can see all those dates are grayed out. If I choose a date that is not today, it's gonna let me choose it. And a real quick way for you to get back to today is just to tap today and see there it jumped right to today. And then I can tap again to close that up. And I recommend it because I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally touched a calendar and change the date around and we don't want that. And then once complete, I always scroll to the top. I know you all probably have this practice, but I'll just say it anyway. Scroll to the top, review your entries, be sure that you've entered them correctly. And once you're happy with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this away so that you can see it. This, this blue dot is my location and I want to show you what that symbology looks like. So I will update the point for there and hit submit. And now because the GPS accuracy was met unbelievably in my basement and I completed that form correctly, we now have a point here submitted. A few things that changed, it created a blue halo around this point and the data forms here is still open. That means that point is selected and so if at this point you realize you need to edit something, you could do that. Just for the sake of showing you, I'm going to tap somewhere else and that deselects that point and that data form closes. Um, let's say something needs to be changed on, on this location and the data collected. I'll tap it and select that point. The data form opens. And in order to edit, I can either tap this pencil here or scroll up until I see that same pencil in the option to edit at the end of the form. And tapping edit just opens that data form to edit. So let's say, um, actually I looked in my in my notes that I take to measure things and, and I think this density was more like four. So I'll change that and now I must submit those edits. I'd recommend once again, make sure that everything is entered correctly 
this is a good time to, to check those edits, and then you'll submit that as well. So now I'll close that form out. Now we've got a little different thing up here with the sync button. You see that little dot that appeared on the outgoing arrow? That's just an indicator that you have actually entered data into your offline map area that, that needs to go out. There's some items there that need to go out. And that's a great thing to kind of give you that little clue. And I'm just going to tap it because there's something in here that I want to make sure that we all see too. While well, working in disconnected mode, and even if from an iPhone, working well connected, you want to make sure this auto sync is off. The, the biggest reason for sync failing is usually a poor Wi-Fi connection. So you want to make sure that you're in control of when the data is, is synchronized back when you have a good connection. Let's talk quickly about some caution areas. These are kind of a review at this point. Uh, make sure that you're in the right enterprise portal. So if you're collecting official data, you want to be in that production, the MRP. If you're playing around or practicing or demoing, make sure you're in the stage environment. Be sure you're using that disconnected data collection if possible. If the submit button fails, it's either because a required field was missed or maybe GPS accuracy had failed to be to meet the requirements. Be really careful with your data collection. Take the time to review it and make sure that what you put in there is correct but we did show you how to edit if you need to in the app. And be sure that you do that daily data sync without fail. Um, I recommend it in the morning before you leave and in the evening when you have all of the data you collected. What it does is it pulls in and pushes out. So you get the most updated map to work with. The markup layer, there's a whole lot more that we could talk about there, but the big takeaway is that it lives on your device and less shared. So that markup layer, there could be a lot of uses for it. I bet you will explore it even more this year and some of the things we can do with it. But just know that it's like writing in your diary. So it is not an official data collection layer. It's something that would be personal notes or maybe um, maybe office related notes. And you want to be sure you're not putting official data collection in that markup layer. And I'd love to hear how you use it so that I can maybe demonstrate that next time. We've gone through a lot of stuff really fast today, especially for new users. But survey protocol questions go to Melinda Sullivan. CECIT now supports our iPads, so you should open a ticket with them and they will support you with issues there. Portal access can be complicated, but that goes through your supervisor. And there's some, some support there if, if that workflow doesn't go smoothly, we're happy to help out with. Anything end user tools training, please mark that web page and bookmark it and visit it often. But also, you're very welcome to reach out to us anytime. Don't forget to take the quiz. I'm going to put that link in the box one more time before we're done. I think we've covered most of the, we've covered this pretty um, pretty well, the new app using the right URL, the disconnected workflow. We took a look at the data form and we talked over caution areas today. But really, I want to just kind of leave you with this, that I'm here for questions. We're always trying to improve these trainings. I know it's a bit of a whirlwind, but I want to leave you with my information to reach out and please let us know how we're doing and how we could do better or share more with you. <laughs>